Hello, it's Peter at King's Barns here and welcome to the distillery. I'm standing outside the very first stage of our whiskey making process, the malt silo. Let's go and have a wee look. So we take in 27 tonnes of malt on every delivery. It enters through this screw auger here, travels up and then into the bucket conveyor where it's bucketed up and into the malt silo. Now it was very important for us to try and keep things as local as possible, uh, to try and give the whisky a sense of place essentially. So we opted just to use Fife Grow and Barley here, um, and that was one of, the, one of the key decisions from the very beginning. We'll head into the distillery now. So here we are in the production room. This is where we process all of our raw materials, the malt, the water drawn from an aquifer 100 metres directly below my feet, and the yeast into making King's Barn spirit. We're going to take the malt in via a series of conveyors into the distillery. It's going to be milled. It's going to be held in a grist case, which is that cream colored vessel there. And then we're going to transfer it into the mash tun, which I'll show you just in a wee second. So quality is at the heart of absolutely everything we do here. We set out with the aim of making a really light, elegant, character-rich uh, style of whisky. So every aspect of the production process is geared towards that. Um, everything from the engineering of the plant, um, you know, how we put the pipework together, uh, to the choice of raw materials, um, and then how we process it as well. Uh, it's all focused around trying to get as much kind of fruity, elegant character into the whiskey as possible. What we've got here is we've actually got a little sight glass. So we can see the, the sugary liquid coming out of the mash tun when we're transferring it across for fermentation. It's really important for us to try and achieve a really clear, bright wort at this stage because that encourages a really light and elegant style of, uh, of spirit. Um, the best way I can put it is that you are what you eat. And essentially what we're, we're doing here is giving the yeast food. And if you give the yeast a really clear, bright color of wort, it encourages lots of ester production. Um, the yeast is going to metabolize those sugars and make something quite interesting. Um, so that's quite an important little aspect for us. The next stage is fermentation. Um, and we're going to ferment that sugary liquid in one of four stainless steel washbacks you can see behind me here. So we're going to use two strains of yeast actually. We're going to use Anchor and we're going to use La Safra. So both yeasts contribute something different to the quality of the, of the spirit. Um, and this is where you get a little bit of complexity, um, a wee bit of balance in the, in the fermentation before you even start getting to the distillation or maturation side of things. We're going to have quite long fermentations as well, you know, 72 to 120 hours in one of these washbacks. That's quite a long time. It gives the yeast plenty of time to, to produce all those lovely flavours that we're looking for. Next stage, of course, is distillation. We'll head down to the stills. It's a very traditional double pot still distillation here. Once in our wash still, and secondly, in the spirit still behind me. Again, we're looking to capture only the lightest, fruitiest segment of the run through our spirit safe. So we take quite a high cut point and we take quite a narrow cut point. And again, everything that we're doing, you know, we're, we're trying to achieve that light, elegant, fruity style. Slow distillation, maximum copper contact. We've got really nice long line arms there as well. And into shell and tube condensers. And on to maturation, an integral part of the whisky making process. By law, we need to age our spirit in an oak cask for a minimum of three years and a day before we can call it scotch. This is also where we develop all of the colour from in our whisky, and you get layers of complexity coming in there, sort of especially in the vanilla side, even coconut. This is the first cask that we have ever filled, and we house it quite appropriately in the oldest part of the building, an ancient ducot. 
The last stage, of course, is having a nose and taste. This is Kingsbarn's Dream to Dram, our flagship malt. It's a natural colour, non-chill filtered and at 46% strength. Lovely kind of golden hue to it there. And what went into this was a mixture of ex first fill bourbon casks, same as what I'm sitting on at the moment, and um, we also had some uh, Portuguese shaved toasted rechar casks that also went into uh, to producing the Dream to Dram. So in the nose, tropical fruit first off, but a lovely sort of sweet shop thing I get about this. It's almost like banana foam sweets. Very light, very floral. Very fruity. And on the palate, sweet up front, I'm thinking kind of soft toffee. With this lovely summer berry mid palate going slightly sour. And the finish, the finish is quite kind of gingery. You just get a wee touch of spice there. Um, lovely. In my opinion, a summer dram. This is something you would have before dinner or maybe out in your garden on a summer's day. Gorgeous. Slange.